it was still snowing. Pure white mist shrouded the entire street, and the snowflakes on the trees prevented the sprouts from budding, leaving the branches bare. After walking for a bit, Gavin realized that these were ginkgo trees on either side of the road. If it had been late autumn, this road would have been covered in golden leaves. Thinking about this, Gavin's footsteps slowed, as his thoughts drifted to the lost ginkgo bracelet and the girl. Although he had only encountered her twice, he had been thinking about her a lot recently. At first, Gavin didn't believe in the existence of a precognition evil. But when the girl took his hand, he felt a strange and mysterious force flow through him. The subtle tingling and the girl's dazed expression convinced him that what she said was true. She saw his future. Gavin didn't know what she saw, but he subconsciously let go of her hand. Shock, unwillingness, doubt. All these emotions surged within him. In the end, only one thought remained. He couldn't let anyone else know she was an evolver. To N.W. or any other forces, the power of precognition was invaluable. Gavin understood clearly that if the girl's ability were to be discovered, she would be endlessly taken advantage of and only a terrible fate would await her. He didn't have time to think about the reason for his concern regarding the future of the stranger, but somehow he had decided to conceal this fact. Just as ginkgo leaves turn yellow and naturally fall in autumn, his choice to save the girl and forfeit the opportunity to study her evolve was also natural. The signal suddenly crackled, and the sound from the communicator interrupted his thoughts. Target located. I repeat, target located. Gavin looked away from the branches of the ginkgo tree, his gaze now sharp, as the thin snow on the ground crunched under his feet. Target has infiltrated Loveland High School. By the time Gavin arrived at Loveland High School, N.W. already had the school on lockdown. Curious citizens whispered throughout the school, and some even snapped photos with their phones. A few uniformed officers noticed, but had no time to stop them as they were busy pulling the barricade tape and talking on their comms. Bypassing the crowd, Gavin walked straight into the nearby school building and swept through the empty rooms. Has everyone been evacuated? A female team member nodded quickly as she flipped through some pages in a file. Almost. Because of the heavy snow, classes have been canceled for quite a while now. There were only a few people inside. Frowning slightly, Gavin took the file from her hand. Almost. The female team member appeared slightly flustered. She paused for a moment and then said, The second squadron just counted the people against the list and found one person missing. It's the hostage. Gavin was very familiar with this situation. It's obvious why he came here. So now we... Keep the school on lockdown. The second squadron remains in position. The others will work in pairs to find the hostage. Gavin assigned the tasks, then passed the file to the person next to him. Looking at the bustling crowd, he paused, then added, Keep me updated. Inform me immediately once he's found. According to the information, the target was a power-type evolver, who could exert extremely strong force in a short amount of time. Generally speaking, N.W.'s presence was not required for evil criminals of this type, but this was a special case. The weapon carried by this evolver required special attention. In addition to black market firearms, he also had gas bombs, which was probably an important reason he chose the school as his location. After all, nothing concerned N.W. more than the safety of civilians. Gavin led the way while a shorter male team member followed along beside him. They went straight through the largest school building and on into a second building. I didn't realize there was another building here. The man looked around for a while. Then, as if remembering something, gazed at Gavin curiously. Captain Gavin, I seem to remember you graduated from Loveland High School. I joined N.W. after only one year of school. Gavin replied blandly, then climbed the steps in front of the building gate 
and pointed to the small garden not far away, just as the rest of the team caught up with them. You take care of the periphery. Because Gavin rarely talked about his past, the man wanted to ask a few more questions, but was immediately assigned a task. He sighed. Uh, yes, sir. Compared to the previous school building, the one in front of them looked a lot smaller. Through the windows, piles of sports equipment could be seen in some rooms, while others were neatly stacked with lab instruments or art tools. Gavin searched through to the top floor and found nothing unusual. As it continued to snow outside, the corridor window glass fogged up. Peering through it, he suddenly caught sight of a ginkgo tree. He had been seeing a lot of those recently. Gavin glanced at the tree, then turned around and continued his search. The structure of the building was quite simple. Except for the rooftop, there were a total of five floors with four rooms on each floor. They were basically student activity rooms. The moment he stepped onto the fifth floor, Gavin keenly noticed something was amiss. In addition to the rumbling snow outside, he also heard the faint sound of cloth rubbing. He was not alone. As the snow slowly fell, Gavin looked at the music rehearsal hall at the end of the corridor on his left and found the wooden sliding door tightly closed. He glanced outside the window, turned, and walked to the rooftop. A pistol, a dagger, two gas bombs, a gas mask? Probably not. It's a power type evolve. Gavin went through the information he just learned, took out his communicator, and pushed open the door to the roof. Found it. East Activity Building, the music rehearsal hall on the fifth floor. After sharing the position concisely, he threw the communicator aside and carefully checked his sidearm. It was very windy on the rooftop. The white snowflakes on his black military uniform were soon scattered by the wind. Gavin stood on the edge of the rooftop and took off his right black glove. In the icy wind and snow, he looked like a lonely wolf as the ruthlessness in his eyes froze. He jumped off the rooftop, and the sound of breaking glass could be heard throughout the building, piercing the silence of Loveland High School. Gavin stepped firmly on the edge of the window frame, ignoring the shards of glass on the floor and the cuts on his cheeks. He looked at the two people in the corner of the rehearsal hall and walked straight towards them. Ten minutes later, the sliding door at the entrance to the music rehearsal hall on the fifth floor was open. The short team member who was previously with Gavin led the team. Looking a little nervous, he held his gun and appeared relieved when he realized there was no anomalous gas in the air. But upon taking in the sight before him, he immediately let out a gasp. The frosted shards of glass on the ground glowed with cold light as snow and blood mixed together and became indistinguishable. The trail of blood and glass extended from the window to the corner of the room, where the hostage they had been searching for was cowering and murmuring something unconsciously. Beside him, the target of the operation was pinned to the ground, his face slammed to the floor with his broken glasses hanging off his nose. He appeared to be in so much pain that the sight of him was enough to give anyone a shock. Gavin had his back to the door as he held the man down. No one could see his expression, but they could see his torn coat, the blood dripping down his fingers, and his messy brown hair. Did he overpower that man all by himself? It was never easy to subdue power-type evolvers, and this target even carried all kinds of weapons. For safety reasons, NW sent four teams for this mission. It was inconceivable that Gavin could handle it alone. The short team member swallowed nervously. He never knew that his captain, the dangerous man whom he had been secretly requested to keep an eye on, was so powerful. He suddenly understood why the leaders had described Gavin as a weapon. How is he? Gavin asked, and everyone in the rehearsal hall looked back at the target. His wound had been simply dressed, 
and there was a small piece of gauze on his left cheek. A female team member was comforting the hostage and gave him a forced smile. He's not in the best shape. I think he needs... Before she could finish her sentence, the hostage suddenly trembled violently. He tightly grasped the blanket that had been placed around him in an attempt to hide himself. His eyes quivered and he appeared defensive. He was scrutinizing Gavin's movements as if he was seeing some abomination. The female team member nodded a little awkwardly at Gavin and quickly took the man away. As they passed by Gavin, she heard the man muttering, Monster! Gavin heard it too, but he just looked at the piano by the window calmly. The blood stains on the pure white piano looked particularly out of place. Clean that up. Only then did the shock crowd return to normal and quickly went about their tasks. After thinking it over for a while, the short team member came to Gavin's side and said, Captain Gavin, don't mind them. Gavin just nodded slightly without speaking. He really didn't take what the man said to heart. Or maybe he was already used to it. He had saved many people from different criminals. Some thanked him, while others were rendered speechless, paralyzed by fear. But in the end, after witnessing his power, most regarded all evolvers as monsters. Suddenly, a man rushed into the room in a flurry, the communicator in his hand still emitting a faint static sound. Captain Gavin, we just received a request for backup. Is it another fugitive? No, it, it's an anti-evolver riot. The air froze, and no one in the room spoke. Only the rustling of the falling snow outside the window could be heard, which sounded like a crowd of people arguing in a low voice. Gavin put on his gloves, picked up his coat, and left the room. Let's go. He hadn't felt such pain since he was a student at Loveland High School, when he was hit in the head by a power-type evolver. The pain was different this time. His head felt like it was about to explode, and the burning sensation was destroying the last shred of his consciousness. His eyesight was blurry, and when he eventually recognized what was in front of him, the sharp pain once again swallowed his consciousness. NW-717 is out of control. Dangerous Category B, taking actions to subdue and recall. He vaguely heard a cold voice along with that of a sobbing girl. She was calling Gavin's name over and over again. The girl's cries continued, even after he collapsed and was immediately surrounded by dark figures. Through the haze, he saw the girl desperately make her way through the crowd and shield him with her trembling open arms. Scenes flashed before Gavin's eyes as he came in and out of consciousness. He was a fish confined in a small pool of water with the sound of ticking instruments nearby. Suddenly, he became a bird. He was immediately shot down from the sky by a loud gunshot. Memories began flooding back. The freezing cold laboratory, blood loss, and the feeling of many pairs of terrified eyes trained directly on him. Then, he heard those words. We've been searching for the Black Swan Queen for a long time. It turns out she's right here. The Queen. He remembered seeing the name in the file. She is the target Black Swan has been searching for. So, she is... The figure in front of him looked thin and delicate creating a sharp contrast to her unwavering posture. To his recollection, this seemed to be the first time someone had ever shielded him in this way. It was always the opposite. Step aside. Kill anyone who interferes with the NW plan. The crowd grew louder and louder, but Gavin could not understand any of it. He saw nothing but the girl's figure, and that's all there was in the world. Suddenly, the barrel of a gun was pointed against her forehead, but she had already made up her mind. She raised her head defiantly and said, I'm the key factor in solving the snowfall incident. I'm... She stopped abruptly as Gavin reached out to her, his cold hand 
taking hold of her wrist. Her hand felt frozen, probably because it was so cold in the snowy mountains. At that moment, Gavin regretted ever allowing her to get involved. NW-717 will obey the recall order. The girl's eyes were full of disbelief as Gavin forced those words through his lips. He pulled her close to him and reached into his pocket with his other hand, grasping the cold, hard bracelet within. He thought to himself, it was a good thing he kept it. He'll have to return it to her.